38 drivers tested, over 18,000 shots hit, and the Callaway Epic Max LS was my Golf Spy's most wanted driver for 2021. Right, many of you will be aware of who my Golf Spy are and what they do, and basically their testing is off a broad cross-section of golfers, different levels in terms of handicaps, and the number of shots they record data from, I believe, is phenomenal. So, their testing is very trusted, very respected, and certainly would be from me. Uh, and I think the idea of today's video is not to question that, but certainly look at, they came up with a driver which was uh, this um, Epic Max LS as being, uh, the the uh, the most wanted for 2021 and for me in my initial testing it was uh, it didn't come out that popular i struggled with it but seeing that as being the most wanted has raised a question in my head and i'm about to put it back to the test it will have exactly the same setup like i said as what we tested last week with the uh, epic speed with some fantastic results and at the end of this video we'll see with today's swing what i produce with the max ls and then i'll compare it to hitting some balls again with that max speed so uh, i think it's about time i got in some golf balls and uh, see why this has come out so popular and was i a fool to dismiss this one in the first place right the most exciting part for me of any test is this part because uh, we're very much going into the unknown typing into the uh, into trackman the product details and very soon we get to find out some data and find out how good or bad this club is so we know what head we're going to be using but in terms of shaft i'm going to be reaching for what is uh, well it's looking like what's going into my bag and uh, it's going to be this one inch shorter shaft this uh, hazardous smoke which proved to be a massive success in my recent tests and i would encourage any uh, average golfer out there if you've not watched that video then uh, it is well worth a watch because it certainly begs a few questions and it did in terms of my driver shaft choice so we'll be taking that one out of the uh, the speed head of the Callaway Epic range, which to be honest with you, I think um, in my initial testing at least, I found that to be unreal. Ball speeds, dispersion, everything about it was fantastic. And when I put this one inch shorter shaft in, like I said, it was incredible. So we'll swap that shaft out and uh, we'll set up this Max LS and uh, see what it is that has been, uh, don't get me wrong, I've read this not just from my Golf Spy, but from numerous places that this is the driver head that seems to be making the headlines. I'm gonna see what I missed out on, on my earlier testing, maybe do a bigger sample, sample in terms of data and uh, let's see what this thing can do with my new uh, hazardous smoke, one inch shorter shaft in place. Just a quick chat about the Max LS driver itself. It's got adjustability as does the Max, whereas the speed head doesn't. Um, in terms of, it's sort of a slightly elongated profile at address. Again, uh, will appeal to some, but not to everybody. But again, I think my opinion on this epic range in terms of um, the 2021 range looks a real quality build. And they all have performed perform particularly well. The thing I find a little bit weird and again um, I don't understand the, the way in which this head is perhaps uh, balanced in terms of whether it's a draw or fade bias in terms of its natural setup but it feels very much different to me in the swing and uh, one that I'm not particularly comfortable with I will say it hasn't bore out that way in results results are looking good in terms of how it's performed but from I, I just I it's a very difficult one to explain but sort of how it feels throughout the swing is very much different to that of uh, what is in the speed head. But let's hit one on camera and see what we can get in terms of bit of number. It seems a little bit heavier is the way I would explain it, but, and that's a really good ball. Uh, and I say a really good ball, I think it's worth pointing out at this stage, um, I recorded some data last week with this one inch shorter driver test that I referred to and uh, I hit the ball extremely well on a personal level. And I think one thing that bears out is that uh, ultimately, no matter what these clubs do, um, it is often, as you know, the Indian and not the arrow. 
and uh, the difference in data between Friday and Monday, which is uh, today's day, is quite different. One of them being swing speed, but then my overall performance is just leaking that ball out to the right. But like I said, I'm recording data today, the swing I've got today, as most average golfers will. We play one weekend, we play the next, and we've got a different, uh, our swing has decided to transform and either leave us, it very rarely stays good for too long. So, uh, how did that look? 236 carry, um, decent ball speed, exactly where I'd want it to be. Spin number 2339. Let's have a look at the launch angle on that. What have we got? Launching at 12.1. That's a good number. Let's see. It's been consistent. There's no doubt about it. But I think what we need to do is maybe have a close look at the data. The question I'd like to ask you before I leave is that you see reviews on my channel and I'm always a strong advocate of, uh, you know, this is just my opinion. These are my numbers. It's very unique to my swing. And uh, I really do think the importance of, uh, you can take guidance from it. And I think that if you watch a number of reviews across YouTube and read such like as uh, my golf spy, if one particular product is uh, standing out there, uh, shoulders, uh, head and shoulders above the rest in terms of the general sense of opinion, then yet, it's a good uh, barometer at least to suggest that that product might be worth giving a go. But like I said, uh, you can almost take a lot of it with a pinch of salt because the mega important bit is you get fit, you try it and you, uh, you see how it performs in your hands because it can be obviously and will be probably very different to what I find and others. Right, let's see if we can beat that. The other thing to mention before I go, I keep saying I'll, uh, I'll is that this ranked longest number one in terms of distance, but only number six in terms of forgiveness. And it's an interesting one that there's obviously an, an overall sort of um, a number of different aspects that are put together to decide how it sits and comes out on top. But they were two very much interesting aspects, distance and forgiveness one and six so for me you know you'd want to really be as an average golfer distance would certainly not be the main barometer for me it would be forgiveness and obviously consistency i seem to it better when the camera's on because them two were uh a decent right let me carry on and let's have a look at some numbers Right, so data collected with the uh, the Max LS, and uh, point to mention, this was a nine degree head. It was set in neutral, and uh, we didn't make any adjustments in terms of that loft. And I'm going to swap out this head now because I've got this data. I'm swinging probably a mile or two slower than I was in uh, last week's test with this one inch shaft and the speed. So I don't want to compare la uh, the numbers from last week. I want to compare today. So I'm going to take this head out, and I'm going to hit the speed head. And we'll see what it does in terms of performance difference. Right, data is well and truly being collected here. I'm in a good sample of shots and, uh, and we're getting there. Um, a point to mention is uh, swing speed on this to this morning is around 95, 96 mile an hour, which is, uh, I'm there or thereabouts, top out at about 98 when I'm uh, loosened up a bit. But the, always, the message I want to get across is that uh, I sort of review clubs very much on behalf of the average golfers out there. I think that swing speed might be relative to, to what you may produce. Uh, so if you like what you see, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. But uh, comments is the big deal that I like. And if you've managed to, perhaps only in America at the moment in terms of retail being open, if you've managed to try this product as yet, then uh, I'd be interested to hear your, uh, your feedback and see what you think. And the second thing is, is not to forget, is that uh, you can now join this average golfers club up that we set up just uh, a couple of days ago. And um, if you do join that, you get 10% off at four golf for this, uh, for this epic range and any other product, to be honest with you, but uh, worth considering. Solid. Right, so we decided to come back uh, inside, one, for a bit of warmth, and two, to just have a look at this data in a bit more detail and see if we can find the differences between the two products. Because to be honest with you, at a first glance, and certainly trying or what I was seeing out in terms of the uh, driving range, there was little to split these. My own performance was A, a couple of miles slower in terms of swing speed than what I'd recorded last week, I think, on the, on the Friday. Um, and also, in terms of my swing, I was leaking the uh, the ball out to the right a little bit. So performance-wise, it was kind of okay, but not great. But I think that's a great time to test these clubs and certainly put some of the uh, characteristics of the clubs to the test. 
I'm going to go into the, um, the LS, the Max LS product, and the data you see in front of you now, I think it was split over what is uh, 11 shots. Um, at the spin number 2524, carry 233 on average, launching 11.8, ball speed 145, peak height 76. I think the, the two things that stand out for me there are, A, the spin number, is no real difference. It's an LS model, don't forget, which is the low spin. I didn't really see that. In fact, in some instances, you know, the first ball there, uh, the first three balls, four balls, in fact, all around that sort of 3,000 revs, which is actually, you suggest, just a little bit high. One dropped out the sky at uh, 1,600 spin, but that overall average was no different to what I'd expect from, uh, or where I'd want it to be at least, but certainly not low spin. And then you go to the launch angle, and that was one of the things that I had an issue with. You've got two balls that really stand out, and the weakest shot or carry was 2-2-1. Two, two, and you'll see the launch angle is only 8.5 degrees. So literally fell out the uh, sky, didn't get anywhere at all in terms of that carry distance. And then you compare it to the other end of the scale and a ball at 247 carry. And if you look at those, um, those stats there for every aspect, it is literally the perfect set of data. But the question is, why was it so perfect in terms of that 247 ball and why was it so poor in terms of the 221 what made that major difference i'll come to that at least in my opinion uh, very very shortly but then we've got this speed product which i've been a, a big fan of and don't forget another reminder this has got this or both have got this one inch shorter shafting so still very impressed with the the data that we produced on both um, once again, same 11 shots, 2570 spin, almost identical um, in terms of that average number. 233 carry, identical, 11.7 .7 launch, ball speeds 145.3, peak height 76. The standout things in there in terms of spin, just as variable as what we've seen in terms of the LS. So we've got, what is it? There's the lowest spin, the first shot, 2069. The highest is in that 3,100 revs. Again, just exactly the same variables that we've seen. And I made another note here, just of the longest ball it was, I'd see 241. But I would say the carry distances were again, very much based on my performance. Uh, I don't think we've seen anything in terms of the performance between the two that necessarily split them. The worry that I would have, and that I've seen in terms of when I've tested low spin drivers, was with those two latter balls, which launched extremely low. Uh, I've got a tendency to do that. I've also got a tendency to see that sort of spin drop off significantly. It didn't do that, and I'm a bit surprised at the sort of average spin. The point was in terms of off the club face, and the club face being identical in both in terms of technology, I suppose. Ball speeds for me, I, I think were very, very comparable. There was nothing to split them whatsoever. The differences are for me were only purely aesthetically and how I felt in terms of the way the club was weighted. It sort of suggests there's a 13 gram weight as we've highlighted in the back end of this sort of elongated Max LS. I don't know what the weight is at the back end of the speed, but for whatever reason, it felt different in terms of how the club head felt through the swing. And again, I would have preferred the, the sort of positioning of the weight uh, in terms of the speed head. And I also prefer that traditional shape, that elongated shape that uh, we see in a Max LS, not for me. The purpose of the video was simple, was to go back and revisit something that I asked a question about because the, uh, the, the team at My Golf Spy determined that the Max LS was the most wanted product for 2021. I said at the start of the video, this wasn't a, a right or wrong, and I can only answer from my own personal perspective, and I think that'll be the end message, is that for me, it's not my most wanted. In fact, out of the three of the epic range, it would be the least favorite of the three. And I think all that shows is that the only thing that matters is your own personal preference and test because whilst lists that are compiled and while videos from people like me give an opinion on a product, they're, only, they're very much subjective. And the point is, as I always try to uh, reiterate, is that uh, we're all very unique in the way we swing the club. We're all very different in what we like to see and address, what we like to hear. So, yet again, it just goes to show that the idea is you test yourself you draw your own conclusions and obviously then you make your own choices as to what you buy. Last thing I'll say is that every one of this epic range in terms of the three driver heads, 
has performed extremely well. Uh, I'd go as far as to say, uh, in terms of most wanted, the range, the three heads, should be on your most wanted list because they, uh, so far, what I've seen, are performing slightly better in, as a collective than, uh, than some of the others uh, that are out there right now. Right, that is it, I'm done. Um, the last message is always to ask you to subscribe if you, if you like what you've seen and, uh, and the comment bit and the, and the hit the like button. And also that mention I'll say once again about this joining this club, which has been an amazing response to it. Um, there's many things that uh, it provides in terms of benefits to its members, uh, but one being, and it's a real big one, is this 10% off clubs like the new Epic Speed Ranger drivers. So uh, go and check out that. And uh, I will see you. It's going to be Monday night when I'll be back. And it's a big video on Monday. Peace out. Really fine. Eh? Really fine. Good.